Nope, not that car. Mm, nope, not that truck. Nope, not that one. Mm, that's cool looking though. This one. Danny, what did you do? You said to notch it for the turbo, so that's what I did. That's, that's a, a that's a notch. That's a rather large notch there, bud. Yeah, well, you know, rather large turbo. <laughs> this is true. Look at that giant turbo we've got to put on this thing. Hmm. So, in this episode, I figured we'd give you guys a more current update than the one that we posted I guess Friday. I don't know if this will come out on Saturday or Monday or whenever, but we're going to show you a bunch of stuff we've done to the car. It's kind of been some of the more tedious stuff, but it's been, haven't really filmed a whole lot of it. So we're going to catch you up on that and then let you know where we are progressing along with Val's Camaro and how we are going to make this thing make it to uh, six week <laughs> in like three months. Looks like we got a long ways to go, and we do have a long ways to go, but we can get it done. Anyways, let's get through the intro and then get into this thing. All right, so it's actually Friday. At the shop, we're getting ready to close up I and mean, look at look at Eddie just cleaning. Look at me working. Cleaning. I saw you bring the camera out, so I started doing something. Oh, is that that yeah. how it goes? Yeah. Y'all see what I have to deal with around here. It's actually the other way around. It's we have to deal with you. <laughs> Guilty is charged. Yeah. Do what? So you're all nice to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I am a yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a tough boss, huh? Yeah, you actually scream at us, tell us how useless we are. I cried yesterday. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, so since the last video, we put Steve's, or Val's, Val's, Rossler Turbo 400 into the car, and Eddie got the, well, he's in the process of making the transmission mount. You can see all fancy schmancy and yes we are going solid because it is completely aftermarket case super stiff in the mid plate area and what that does is this transmission mount acts as an engine limiter which we could have added some kind of engine limiters in here somewhere we've made threaded inserts here to make like a plate that we were going to go up to the block but there's no like easily accessible holes in the block. I mean, I guess we could make it off of some of these or maybe the oil pump plate block or something. But when we thought about it, we were like, let's just do solid transmission. Memory. So, and earlier when we first got this thing in, if you go back and find that video, it had uh, the dump valve and adjustable converter pressure charge, all these cool little knobs on the side of the transmission, but uh, you can see we're kind of pressed for space there. So, our buddy Alan, uh, Alan Whitaker, if you guys don't know of Alan, in my opinion, Alan has the coolest car that's ever gotten an SMX in it. Um, sorry, Steve and Tom and even Mullet. Like, there's just something awesome about a real deal Monte Carlo with all the chrome, chrome trim, all that cool stuff. I forget what he said it weighs, but it's not light, and it's been into the sixes at over 200 miles an hour. That's just cool. So anyway, Alan, who's also obviously one of Steve's customers, he had... I guess taking a remote setup off. So he sent us all of the parts and pieces that I guess he didn't need for his car, including that plate that's now bolted to the transmission. And then there's this piece that goes onto the back because originally like where this joint was right there, that bolted directly to the transmission. 
and you can kind of see it's got these awesome knobs for adjusting your your uh, converter PSI as well as your the amount you are dumping when you activate the dump solenoid so all that's pretty snazzy hey I might need that later well it's in the way we're trying to clean it. okay fine actually I'm going to use inch and a half no I'm going to use that's inch and five eighths I'm going to use inch and a half for my car oh. got some work to do on my car tonight or tomorrow morning or something but anyways Alan sent us that and uh we're gonna have to figure out where we're gonna mount that and it may be up here you know farther forward because it doesn't matter where it's mounted you just have to hook this into the lower uh converter line and then this where that red cap is down there that's got a hook to that white fitting back there on that plate in the back, right there. So that's one of the projects we've got to figure out. But for the time being, because we have to get the engine back to Steve for him to freshen it up, we've been working on mounting these gigantic turbos and we are pressed for space. When I originally was putting this thing together, I had the idea of putting an SMX in it for the customer that was building the car and then Steve and Val ended up buying it. But it was originally getting a twin turbo LS in it. Well, now with the size of the SMX and the turbos that are required to feed this super mega horsepower engine, um, we've had to get Kind of creative with some of the parts we have ordered to build the headers and firstly well i guess first and secondly we uh saw guys at cjrc use some of these on eagle looked that company up on the internet well elmer racing out of finland and ordered up some of these as well as their billet elbow so that we can really really shorten up and i'm even gonna take i'm gonna take some distance off here i'm gonna take some distance off here and i'm going to machine like you can see how deep this step is right here i'm gonna machine that to where there's only about an eighth of an inch of pilot left just so that we can make this header as compact as we can one so it's easier to take in and out of the car because like say the engine needs to be serviced in chassis, they will need to be able to pull the header off, leave the turbo in place, and then pull the cylinder head off, you know, do some maintenance, whatever, because it's pretty easy to get the oil pan off. You know, it's real easy to get the oil pan off the thing. Once you drop, like we have to build a belly pan, which the nice thing about this deal we've with the dry sump pan on it it's actually above the bottom of the frame rails we could slam the engine down even more but i am good with the crankshaft center line height because of how low the turbos are going to mount so i think that's going to help us and with this being a radial car i think we're in a good enough spot with the engine center line height but lots and lots of stuff we've got to get done you can see we did a tab back here for the transmission belly pan. And we have to still make our new mid plate because with the SMX, I wanted it to go up and catch a bolt. Like that's how it's gonna go in the car. And on top of the chassis, there's a hole up here. So I wanna tie into there. And then that kind of acts like a block saver too because it you know, it's gonna go flat up against the back of the block here. And between the flex plate and the block. So that will protect the back of the block were something to go ugly up in here. And when we do that, we're gonna bring that mid plate down here so that, you know, the front pan can attach to it. Either with, I might do some like pins 
where it'll just slide in and then you just swing the belly pan up, tighten it in with some Zeus fasteners around this edge here, and then same with the transmission. So it'll have a pan that comes up, comes in from the backside, and then these were a part of the chassis. We powder coated them. We still have to send this out to powder coat once we finalize the transmission mount. And one of the things some people may have already may already be alarmed about the relationship of the drive shaft tunnel to the U joint. And if you remember when we originally built this drive shaft can drive shaft enclosure that was for a power glide transmission with a gear vendors overdrive on the back of it and it was supposed to end up about right there so the yoke was going to be inside so before we sent this off to powder coat we welded in some inserts here and there and we are going to build another like mini can mini drive shaft enclosure that's going to cover the area from you know from right to this can and it's actually going to cover all the way up and enclose this front u-joint so it might be kind of fun getting the drive shaft in because you know if the drive shaft enclosure is all the way to right there you'll have to really sight it down the down the transmission tunnel and with this we were kind of just triple checking that everything uh was gonna fit like that's our gonna be our drive shaft clearance we were checking it for making sure with full droop and a bunch of other little things we were just checking just to make sure everything was happy there but there's some things to show you up inside the car but back here you'll notice that we've got some rather large wires hanging out and uh i guess i'm gonna lower the car down and show you what show you what those are doing can you work a little faster Caw! no nothing not even a thing not a thing oh no. i'm on i'm on camera <laughs> see that's how it normally is he just he's mean to me so i just try to ignore him or else i'll cry again it's all right i was just trying to help you get to sleep you can cry yourself to sleep every night you're welcome True. thanks mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm-hmm All right, so I forgot to mention earlier in the video, but if you guys want some KSR merch, it's getting to be hoodie season. You'll see I'm in a long sleeve shirt because it was like 46 here this morning. It's like October and it normally doesn't get that cold in October here, but it was cold this morning. And now it's warmed up enough that we have the AC on again. That's Florida. But anyways, we with KSR.com. Lots of merch, hats, shirts, stickers, and all the parts you could ever need for your race car. Give us a call, we can help you out with your project. So anyways, Will, the last time he was in here, he worked on getting our entire rear harness done for the car. So all the wiring harness for the entire rear bumper, which includes a flanged Deutsch connector that's going to be the trailer plug. So this will have a plug that goes into it and then a, you know, a little umbilical or a little cord that has both a trailer plug on it, like a four pin trailer plug, but it's also going to have a pretty large Deutsch connector on it because we wired in battery power and ground so that if there's a spare battery being carried in the trailer, the car can be charging it while you're going down the road and that'll be able to be plugged in or not plugged in or maybe you need to jump the car off because you ran your main battery dead in the car like I did at LS Fest and cost us the race or at least cost us being able to finish the race anyway salty grapes so we'll got our entire rear harness done and I've kind of just peeled it out here and borrowed some some leftover wiring from another project that we did not use so that I can show you guys all of the lights lighting up for the first time, because that's exciting. But the idea is that the rear bumper is removable, and with that one plug, you take 
all of the rear bumper off with the brake lights and the reverse lights and the tag lights and the corner marker lights and the electrical power for the uh, cutoff switch. So we use an electric cutoff solenoid. So that'll be the main power cutoff for the whole car. Easy peasy because that's gonna be mounted up right near the battery. So it's small gauge wire that runs from the back to the front or from the front to the back, back to the front. Keeps all that like where it's lightweight because the cutoff switch, well, I guess we haven't, yeah, we did mount it. It's right there by the, right there by the battery, the main, main battery cutoff switch. And we haven't done a whole heck of a lot inside of the car other than just kind of siding that transmission uh you know the 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 dump valve tuner thing like it's it fits up inside of this hole right here like it's actually out beyond the plane of this because it it would fit once it was in the car but you'd have to like roll the transmission to get out and that's not what we want so I've thought about maybe mounting it kind of here where it's, you know, sh above the area of the transmission. So it's not in the way. And this, the carbon goes here to here. So we could make like a little removable panel right there to be able to access the knobs. A couple of different things we're kind of kicking around, but let me go grab one of them so we can, oh, there they are. Hurry up. You hurry up. Hurry up, come on. Oh, wow. Actually, I need somebody to come hold the phone. Oh. So we I sold was... this giant welder and uh, the guy wanted to, he's coming to get it tomorrow. There went something. <laughs> so he wanted to see it operate. So all of our welding bottles are currently up here. It's on wheels. So we're rolling it inside to be able to show him that it works tomorrow. We used it recently on Lee's trailer, welding up some stuff to his incredibly thick aluminum tubing that makes up his trailer. Come here, hold the phone, poor Favor. Yes, sir. <laughs> My whole hand just blocked it, sorry. Careful, careful. You know, if, if you stand over here, you can see the light. Yeah, I just want to see you, though. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, show us how lights work, Kevin. Show you. Well, I mean, stop it. <laughs> it's cool to see the lights light up for the first time. I know. Which, actually, they lit up this morning. It's not the first time. Oh! So that's part that, lights. Okay. So you got tag lights, marker light work over there. Yep, yep. You got a marker light, sweet. All right, so that's park. And obviously this is temporary wiring. Yeah. So reverse lights. Yep. Snazzy. And then I wired the, my jumper covers both turn signals. And obviously these are, there's a left and a right in the connector, but just to test them with one wire, yeah. I just tagged them together. So, yeah, that's cool. Let's see if I can do this. Let's see how much brighter they get. Oh, yeah. Cool, right? Yeah, those are the hazards. Make the hazards work. There you go. <laughs> that's what Val's going to turn on when she passes Steve in the wagon. Wow. <laughs> wow. Or when she passes you in the Buick. Hey, this thing will be way faster than the Oldsmobile that I own, at least until I can get Steve to sell me an SMX. That's probably a few years down the road. But that's what Will got done at the back of the car. And the way all of the wiring is going to work is there's basically going to be a wire it's got a Deutsch connector on that end and a Deutsch connector at the front to plug into the harnesses that split and go to the ECU or to the leash electronics board. So everything will be able to be quickly kind of removed, tested. You know, you can do all that kind of stuff to, the idea is to make the car really easy to work on. 
and I believe that Will also got, and it's not in here, but he got the harness done from the MSD over to the main ECU harness, or at least it's it's like an umbilical that you know has the connector on it for the the MSD, and then it's going to go over, and then it's got a Deutsch connector somewhere over there. Uh, the harness is ha probably 75% done that goes from the ECU up to the hole in the firewall for the, uh, this is like all our main engine sensors, you know, oil pressure, fuel pressure, uh, TPS, air temp, idle air control motor. Um, probably cam and crank will go through here. Uh, maybe, maybe the water pump and fan control. I don't know yet. Those may go somewhere else. But this was supposed to be our fuel injector plugs. Like it's a bulkhead connector that snaps in with a Deutsch. It's all weather sealed and everything. But because we've got throttle body back here and we need to add a third plug because this was originally for the twin turbo LS, one set of street injectors, one set of race injectors. Well, this engine has two sets of race injectors with the third street injector underneath it. So we are going to relocate this out here farther so that we can get the charge pipe out here to the turbo and like, We'll figure out all that and then the harness will come right over this bar because the uh, those are the two injector driver modules right there. And as a part of the main engine harness that Will's been working on, he's got the wires that go up to the injector drivers, but we still have to wire from injector drivers out to the firewall plus build our harnesses out there. Um, got a whole bunch of mapping we got to do because we've got to do, we've got the steering wheel buttons, we've got brake pressure and line lock over there on that side of the car. Um, we've got neutral safety switch for the shifter. There's also going to be, uh, I think the air solenoid for the shifter is actually mounted right there on the board. And then there's gonna be some different lights. Uh, the switch panel mounts up there, but lots and lots of wiring we've gotta get done on this thing. And Will works on that when he comes in while Eddie and I are working on the front part of the engine here, which if you watched in the last video, you saw me talk about this deal here and how I've seen some cars that basically they just run this bar right to the strut cup, from the strut cup down to the chassis. They may not even run this part of the chassis. And then to meet the rules, they take this and literally just put a weld a tab to the bottom of it, weld a tab to here and bolt it on. Yeah, we're pushing the rules here. And I guess if that's legal, that's legal. So this is how we did it. Certainly uh, could have done some things differently because if we didn't have all of that frame rail there in the way, you know, it would be quite a bit, it would have a lot more room. And this may get trimmed some more back here, but it's got at least a good chunk of the stock frame in to mount the stock location K member. At least that bolts into a stock 2010 to 14 Camaro, I think is the year of that. And one other big thing that Eddie got done since the last video is we got our CJRC billet front end mounts installed. And you can see they bolt here because they are welded to the subframe that I was just talking about. And you'll notice they're at an angle and I guess we're going to have to go get the front end and uh, we'll show you why here in just a second.
Whoa, that thing's cooking. So bright. Whoa, 300 amps. Dipping that tungsten. No. <laughs> See, it works. Somebody missed a really good deal on that because we sold it for 500 bucks just to get it out of our lives. And uh, that thing. This thing rips. <laughs> it's like you want to do some big, some big jobs. Yeah. This thing rips. Dang! Look at that. Not bad. Not bad. Little. Uh, that was with pulsing. Actually, I'm, needs a. Yeah, it's a little. It wet into this good, but it didn't fully yeah. wet into the bottom, but not bad. I'm going to run a little bead without pulsing. Oh, just run it solid? Yeah, because I think you, Ricky, prefer to pulse aluminum, but I kind of don't. I go back and forth. Depends on what I'm doing. No pressure. Nobody's watching. I really can't see anything with the torch or with the... <laughs> Ow! Oh, he's looking. Yeah. Haven't used this hood in a while. Side, Actually, that looked that, that cleaned up kind of nice. You got a shove rod in, like yeah, that is me still shoving it in. Well, that that needs it, probably at least an eighth inch rod. Yeah. Oh. You dip the tungsten. I think it's just dirty. Yeah, cause you dipped it. That's yeah, what that that's what that arc wandering was from. Anyway, so this older welder, you have to use the green tungsten on it, and it really balls up the tip. The modern inverter style welders, like our HTPs, those you can use a different tungsten that retains a better point, so you can get a much more precise weld. Yeah. Cool. It works. It works. You want to put the front end on this thing so we can show how the front end mounting works I guess we're gonna have to just put it on and then I'll show it in place it does sound like a large industrial fridge I wonder how old that thing is probably says on it somewhere older than me yeah 100 percent all right and 45 seconds later it's got a front end on it so you can see the Clecos on the front of the bumper there those are going to our plates and then you can see our front end tree that Eddie built. And the reason that we do them at an angle is maybe you can see. So not only does that tube pilot down there, but there's a washer welded so that when, when the rear end, rear end, when the front end slides back into place, it's, it locks in like the side to side movement. Like literally it doesn't move at all. Eddie did a good job. Yay. Nice. See, see, yeah. that's, that's how it really is. It's the first time. First, first time. First time. <laughs> it's not the first time. Not at all. But that uh, is how that works. And then what there's going to be to mount the top of it there's gonna be a bar that goes around the front here that will be removable. So we'll do some kind of threaded inserts here with a flange, bar comes up, and then there will be Zeus's on this hood lip, because the hood goes into this pancake lip right here. And then there was gonna be, I think I'm gonna do some that just mount the front end. And then also there will be more that go through the hood, through the front end, down to that bar with the Zeus rail on it. So that way the hood is actually clipped down 
to the framework and not just attached to the fiberglass nose. Like it kind of just sandwiches everything together. Gonna do the same thing with uh, back here. There'll be a bar that comes out, you know, and then a Zeus rail like we did for some of the stuff under the car just to get rid of all of that. And you can see how it flexes. And when we do the, when we do the front end tree, like the, that Zeus rail and the bars, all of that flimsy floppiness will be gone. And there will be also something back here, probably going to split this in here because the exhaust will be down here and it makes it a lot easier to not have to take this off around the exhaust, like if they're going to take the front end of the car off. And the reason we are making this bolt on, because this is also going to incorporate the upper radiator mount to it, but we're gonna make that removable. So if they wanna take the engine out, take the front end off, you take that bar off, which will then, you know, the radiator will have some kind of mounts that mount the radiator to there. And then the engine will be able to come basically straight forward and out instead of having to go way up and over the all the bars and everything. The idea is to make it, I guess, as modular as possible. So things can just be unbolted, removed, taken off. I don't remember if I showed this in the last video since it showed up. But this is actually Tom. So I was filming that last little clip. You might have noticed there was a really awkward break right there a second ago. My phone went dead. Didn't realize it. I'm like filming stuff, talking about the radiator mock-up that uh, Tom sent us. And uh, was basically talking to nobody. But anyways, Tom Bailey sent us his mock-up. Delta Pag dual fan radiator deal. And Steve, I believe, has this same unit in his wagon. There's also one in the Cowboy Up Nova that Jason Sack drives. That's got an SML in it. But anyway, another cool car. So it's kind of going to be neat that all of the cars will have the same radiator fan. Um, the oil cooler location may be a little different because we've got, you know, these mock up oil coolers that are going to go somewhere up in the chassis, but we're going to work this out. Like I said, with that bar that goes around the front, you can see that'll be tucked in somewhere in there, all below the hood line and everything. Have to make some mounts that catch the bottom of the radiator down there. And then, you know, the fuel pump goes in here on the end of the camshaft tunnel. It's actually the mechanical fuel pump for the alcohol system. But this thing's about to really start getting complicated. And uh, you can kind of tell we don't really have a lot of room for the turbo. It's kind of neat. You can see the uh, steering column tube now that the outer frame's cut out. But when, when uh, the wheel is turned and this thing's on the ground, uh, it gets kind of tight in there for those humongous turbos but we're gonna make them fit and hopefully by next week we will have a turbo mounted we'll be starting on the headers hopefully getting those wrapped up i'm hoping by the end of next week that's kind of my goal uh we may be going down to bradenton to race soccer mom or I'm going to do a track rental up at Gainesville if I can. And we're going to take everybody out there and play with all the cars, hopefully. i got to work that out with Gainesville still. But we're going to take the burnout car. Eddie and I are going to drag race our Rangers. We're going to try and drag race all the daily drivers. You know, at least make one or two passes just because. And um, just go out there and have some fun. Or we'll go down and uh, both the lawn dart and maybe soccer mom run uh the race down in Bradenton we'll have to see but I thought you guys might want to see an update on uh, like a more modern update and like some people are definitely uh not happy about the uh the shock tops but you know 
that's what we're going with. That's what it's going to be. And it's kind of how old Outlaw 10.5 cars used to be built, which you may not know what Outlaw 10.5 cars are, but it used to be a class that had to have stock style front suspension. And then you could kind of do like this is like a back half car, as well as they ran on a 33 and a half tall by 10 and 10 and a half inch wide slick real popular probably 10 years ago i would say it's making a comeback in some other areas but really cool class kind of one of the first real real fast classes i guess that were kind of small tire and stock style bodies and then the whole radial revolution happened and guys started going super fast on really small tires and uh we're kind of in the middle with this car it's going to be on radials we got big and small radials but you know i don't think it looks bad you know maybe you do maybe you don't but that's what the car's going to be leaving with unless steve calls me and tells me he wants to redo all of it but that's not likely because if we do that we won't make our deadline and that's just the reality of it but we're going to make it work with what we've got and um I don't know. I think it'll look pretty good once everything's all said and done and uh, painted up and pretty. Be making some big strides on it this next week. But until then, we will see you guys in the next one. Appreciate all of you watching, subscribing, following along. See ya.